So we're at Connected Cars and Autonomous Vehicles Europe in London at the Excel Centre. I'm here with Steve Bell from Heavy Reading. Hey Steve, how are you doing? Hey Ray, good, very, very good. Excellent. So you've been uh, checking out what's going on around the connected cars and in general the sort of IoT sector the last couple of days. What's the key sense you're getting about developments in, in the whole connected cars uh, area? Well, I think one of the, the most amazing things is that this uh, exhibition and, and conference brought together a couple of things. You've got 5G at one end of the yeah, conference Yeah, 5G area. world is all the way over all there. All over there. And then you've got a connected vehicle down this end. And it's almost like the world of optimism and the world of pragmatism. Right. Uh, you know, 5G is talking about, you know, connected vehicles, autonomous vehicles. Intel did a presentation this morning saying, well, autonomous vehicles by 2020 are going to be generating four terabytes of data per day per vehicle. And you think, wow, you know, you've got to have a 5G network. And then you come down to this end and they're saying, well, you know, we're not sure if we're going to use 5G. Maybe we might be utilizing digital short range communication that we've been working on, which is the uh, IEEE uh, 802.11p standard okay. um, that they've been working on for sort of 10 years and so you know you, you sort of hear this this difference between the approach uh, there was a strategy analytics presentation that was showing you know the, the number of sensors that were being put into the cars which is rapidly climbing right. you know, and and you start to think of Ford and what they've been putting into their compact vehicles you know everything from you know you know lane keeping to cross traffic avoidance to braking you know front view wide angle cameras wide angle rear cameras you know, 15 or so ultrasonic type uh, Will there sensors. be any room for the engine left in the car? Well, what, what's the engine going to be? Is it going to be a hybrid? Is it right. going to be electric? You know, electric makes it a lot simpler. Um, and then, you know, and again, it's sort of tangential to that, you, there was a presentation about manufacturing and the fact that the whole industry is going to go through a huge transition. You know, tier one players, um, you know, one, one OEM was quoted as saying, why would I pay my tier one uh, vendors like Bosch and Continental to do all this learning and research when they're going to charge me for it and I need to know about AI and you know all of the, uh, the autonomous driving mechanisms I ought to be playing playing that card myself so you've got this sort of challenge and then all, obviously all of the new industry you know, the Google's Microsoft with their AI platforms and you've got Tesla obviously sort of continuously sort of moving the, the, uh, the game forward and keeping everybody on pace. So actually it's, um, it's an interesting element and I think one of the challenges is, is really articulated in terms of somebody saying, you know, a CEO of a, of a car company at this point of time is going to be saying, I've got to position my company for the future but that is going to impact my bottom line because there's costs associated with that. And although the company I'm going to reference now isn't in the car industry, they've been making the point for the last five, six years that you, in transitioning in this digital transformation, you're moving from products to services, right. but that's a huge investment. And, and the company I'm referring to is GE. You know, they talk about the fact that you know, they don't sell engines, they now sell flight times. Well, of course, the shareholders don't necessarily agree with the pace of the development. So Jeff Inmelt this week was really sort of replaced as chairman, but he was the, you know, the father and the driver of this digital transformation. So there's a very fine balancing act that's, that needs to be played out in terms of creating this digital transformation, whether it's in connected cars, or if it's in any of the peripheral industries like smart manufacturing, right. then it's going to deliver it. So